Hey weirdos, it's Emma Abe, and today I'm going to be doing a little fun video. Hopefully it's a quick video. That video is the Do I Have That Book Tag. I wrote down all of the prompts here in my uh, notebook, and there's 20 prompts, so I think I can get most of them, but we'll see. First is Do You Have a Book with Deckled Edges? I know I do, I just have to think. <laughs> well, I see one over on my bookshelf. Mm. Ah, just reached into a shelf that I could put my hand over because some of these there's like you can't reach my hand all the way back through because they're quite short. So this first book, the one with deckled edges, is The Last Empress, Madame Chiang Kai-shek and the Birth of Modern China by Hannah Pakula. There we go, that's one. My, the second prompt is a book with three or more people on the cover. That has two. That doesn't have people. Ah! Haha! -ha! There's four. The Children of Henry VIII by Alison Weir. There we go. Third is a book that is based on another fictional story. I have a whole shelf of stuff that is just like famous fictional stories. Let me see if I have one that's based on a fictional story. At least on this bookshelf. If I don't, I'll go look on my other ones. I think I do. Oh! Winter is based off of Snow White. There we go. Winter by Marissa Meyer. Fourth is a title that is ten letters long. Ah! Does the the count? You know, I'm gonna go with the the doesn't count because I don't want to be here all night. And that would be the last castle. Let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. And that is the epic story of love, loss, and American royalty in the nation's largest home. This is by Denise Kieran. Ah, a title that starts and ends with the same letter. Most people say they've never looked at these prompts before, but I'm not going to pretend that I didn't. I did, and so you'd think I'd be better prepared, but I really am not. <laughs> Ooh. <laughs> Perfect. The Rise of Theodore Roosevelt. T. T. There we go. By Edmund Morris. <laughs> I did it. I did it. I found it. That took way longer than I thought it would. Number six is find a book that is a mass market paperback. That is very easy for me. I will show you. I have a whole shelf. Male and Female, The Study of Sexes in a Changing World by Margaret Mead. Number seven is a book that is written by an author using a pen name. So I know I have some over there. I just want to see if I have some over here. <laughs> Oh, I found one. I found one. I don't know if this really counts, but I'm gonna call it that because it's not their real name. <laughs> Me, by Elton John, because Elton John is not actually Elton John's real name. I don't know if it counts, but we're gonna call it that. It does count. It does count in my book, and I'm making this video, so I get to make up all the rules. One with a character's name in the title. I have a really obvious answer for that, if you can tell by the series, like, up there. But I don't want to choose that one. I want to see if I can find a different one. Does a nonfiction character count? Like, does a real person? If a real person's name is in the title, does that count? Because I have, like, all these biographies. I'm going to say it doesn't, just to for the challenge. If I can't find one over here, I'll, I'll pull up the odd one. I have to go to my fiction section, which is like right here. Yeah, it's literally like just this shelf, and then I have like some over there and some over there. And oh, I'm gonna go with An Abundance of Catherines, because I'm assuming there's a character named Catherine. And I also know that the main character in this dates lots of Catherines, so I'm calling it a win, and this is by John Gray. Booyah! I'm winning. One that has two maps. This one I kind of knew automatically. It's always a good source for like the two maps or like nonfiction books. Oh, oh, 
Freak! Yes, it does! Chernobyl, the untold story of the world's greatest nuclear disaster by Adam Higginbottom. And this has, let's get the sleeve off of this first. Yeah. This has the map of what the nuclear reactor looked like. Fun fact, I personally think that there's lots of parallels between coronavirus now and the way Chernobyl was handled. Then you have this map of the Soviet Union. So there you go, two maps already. And then you have two more maps. This is a more close-in view as to the where it specifically happened in, in Ukraine and where the zones, the affected zones were. And then here's like just a more zoomed in view closer to the town of Pripyat. And then here is an even more zoomed in view of the town of Pripyat. That is four. And then we also have this map, which is a map or floor plan of the actual power plant. And we have a, another view of the power map of the inside of the nuclear power plant, specifically focusing on the core. So what was that? Five maps? If you want a bunch of maps, get into nonfiction because nonfiction has maps. A book that was turned into a TV show. Oh. oh, I had an answer for this. I know I did. Oh, I'm stupid. Can I reach this without getting off my butt? No. Yes, I can. So that would be John Adams by David McCullough. And this is turned into the iconic HBO miniseries, John Adams. This one counts. Ooh, I'm doing well. How many do I have so far? I've gotten all of them so far. Next one is find a book written by someone who is famous for something else. Well, couple of contenders. You have Caitlin Doty's with My Cat Eat My Eyeballs, Big Questions from Tiny Mortals About Death. She has a very popular YouTube channel called Ask Mortician. She works as a mortician. She's a licensed mortician, so that's her main job. So she was famous for doing those other things, for being a mortician and for running a channel all about death and all that stuff and then she got into writing books but that's very closely tied so I don't know about this one. Then you have all like my nonfiction books that are written by people who are well established like in their said field like Guns, Germs, and Steel by Jared Diamond or Yuval Noah Harari. They are writers but they're like famous in their fields of like sociology and anthropology not necessarily for writing but how most people know them through is through their writing but they're well established in their career. Same thing with like Emperor of All Maladies with Siddhartha Mukherjee. Like he's a very clinician that's very well known and is very popular but a large part of how people know them is through their books and a lot of part of a lot of their career requires them to write books. So I don't really know if I want to count that. Yeah, I mean even John Green, he is a writer but he's also a very famous YouTuber. So I guess that would count but hmm, it's just still very tied close to their writing. You know what? I'm gonna do this one. Because this is In My Own Words by Ruth Bader Ginsburg with Mary Harriet and Wendy W. Williams. This one counts, in my opinion, because Ruth Bader Ginsburg, in my opinion, is a household name. We stand Ruth Bader Ginsburg here on this channel. But she's a Supreme Court Justice. She is very famous for doing that and just being a really well-accomplished woman of our time existing now. I'm so happy I exist at the same time she does. I'm really sad I did not take an opportunity to actually go to the Supreme Court when I was in D.C., Ah, I really fucked up on that one. But she wrote this, and it's a compilation of all her speeches, and it's really good. Read it. I need to finish this video because I need to go back to re watching my Chinese drama. <sighs> so good. I'm watching Ch 10 Miles of Peach Blossoms, and I have less than 10 episodes left. I'm so excited. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Do, 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 do. One. Find a book with a clock on the cover. <laughs> yes, this does! Oh my god. I'm so excited. I thought I would not be able to fulfill this one. But this is Radium Girls, The Dark Story of America's Shining Women by Kate Moore. And look at that. There is a clock dial right there. Because love of Radium Girls painted clock dials. Oh, I'm so happy. It's even on the spine too. Do you have a poetry book? Yes, I do. 
Shout! The True Story of a Survivor Who Refused to be Silenced by Lori Halsey Anderson. And this is nonfiction. I do have a poetry book that is not nonfiction, but it's also by Lori Halsey Anderson. I don't own a lot of poetry, guys. Cut me some slack. It's not my genre. Next prompt is a book with an award stamp on it. That's not an award stamp. That's just a inspired a musical. Which is a good musical, don't get me wrong. We I love Hamilton. I know I have one. Somewhere. I'm gonna these because they're all in apology books and I don't fit. Lots of words to me. Oh! It's not the traditional stamp, but here it says winner of the Pulitzer Prize. Has that stamp there too? Oh wait! Never mind. Let's go with the other sort of for Mukherjee book. And that is The Gene, and this one has two. This is The Gene, an intimate history by Star for Mukherjee, and it won the 100 Notable Books from New York Times Book Review in 2016 and the Washington Post Top 10 Best Books in 2016. This is a good book. I highly recommend that you read it if you're interested in genetics. Such a good discussion. Genetics is actually one of my favorite topics to learn about and read about. One with the same initials. So... This one might po cause a problem because I don't want my legal name out there or my initials, so solution. Let's do... So my channel name is called uh, Emma A. Book Book, so I guess we're gonna go with E.B. as my initials. Sure. Let's try... E.B. Because those names probably start with an I. Close. Ah, oh, there's an Eric. Eric Larson. But it's not a B, damn it. Other. No. 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 Other. <sighs> I should move all of the books written by Karen Armstrong in my religious section to be all together, because they're not, and, uh, grr. You know, I think we're gonna have to call it. Damn, that's unfortunate. Mm, man, I thought we would have that. Next one is a book of short stories. I do have that. Look at this. Great American short stories. This big boy. Wow. Some of these short stories I've read, some of them I haven't, some of them I've never heard about before. Blue Hotel, New England Nun. Have you guys heard of any of these? Hmm. Maybe I'll do like a video where like I do all like a bunch of mini reviews from this book. Don't topple over please pile. A book between 500 and 510 pages. You know what, let's go to the obvious choice and uh, go to the inheritance cycle because I really don't want to thumb through a bunch of books. I just want to find out right away. So let's actually start with the Bartimaeus trilogy because maybe... Ah, uh, wait, maybe? Maybe? Right on the money. 501, the third edition in the Bartimaeus trilogy, Ptolemy's Gate. Oh my god, I'm so happy. Holy crap, that was the first book I pulled off my bookshelf. Oh. A book that was turned into a movie. Let's see if I can find a nonfiction. Nope, nope, nope. That's fiction. Most of these aren't. Oh! Oh! Boom Shakalaka! The Big Short Inside the Doomsday Machine by Michael Lewis. Graphic novel. Oh my god. Persepolis. We have Persepolis 1 and 2, the, the story of a childhood and the story of a return by Marjane Storapi. So these are good. I went through a phase when I was a child where I liked reading nonfiction in graphic novel form. So I read like the two big ones, and that was Mouth, 
which I also have right there. And this almost done. We're almost done. One T is find a book that was written with two or more authors. This should be pretty easy to get with nonfiction because sometimes nonfiction is written that way, especially more academic works. And I'm going to choose a really academic work, work for this because I want to. And I'm going to go to my anthropology shelf because I know there are books on here that are written by more than one person. That's up. First, this one. Enigmas of Easter Island by John Fleeney and Paul Bowne. And that's it. Now I have this giant pile of books that's going to topple over and I don't want to pick it up. But I can do this. Well, hi Lincoln. Or I could just flip the camera. It's so much easier. There you go. There are all the books. I made them nice and tidy. Wow, that's actually kind of really impressive. So there you have it. I got a whopping 19 out of 20, which is great. And most of these books are nonfiction. I think the only ones that aren't, just doing a quick glance over, is Winter, An Abundance of Catherine, Great American Short Stories, and Ptolemy's Gate. So only four of them, which I think is pretty good. And honestly, I could have gotten them all, but some of the stuff with like the, you know, the character's name, that's kind of difficult because, you know, do you call uh, real people characters, you know, they're people, they live, they walk the planet, if you're going with biography. Short stories, it's the only one that would also give you issue, but you could also just change it to a collection of essays. Uh, that is it for me. I'm going to avoid cleaning this up right now because I want to go to bed, and also continuing watching my sea drama, Ten Miles of Peach Blossoms. I'm so excited. I have successfully gotten my mom hooked on the on the sea drama Le Coupe de Foudre um, as an attempt. Here's a picture of it. Oh my god, it's got to the point where she's just like is eating up the episodes and I'm just like hee hee hee. Next one I want her to watch with me is Ashes of Love because I've watched that, got hooked so fast that, that it'd be really fun to watch that one with my mom. Anyway, but I'm hoping. Let's see. I don't know. Making no promises. But maybe she can make a guest appearance in my May wrap-up. Let me know if you guys want to see that. Goodbye. Like, comment, subscribe, all that necessary things. And yeah, I am going to continue watching my C drama. But really, go to bed. That's what I'm going to do. Go to bed. Continue watching my C drama. Bye. Okay, back to the original setup. This might be in a blooper reel or something. I don't know. Welcome to how officially I run my channel. And it's also like 2.30 in the morning. Mom, don't watch this video because she doesn't like it when I stay up too late. <laughs> oh my god, it's gonna topple!